This is Teachable Moments with April podcast, and you guessed it, I'm your host, April. If you're a returning listener and a part of the Teachable Moments with April podcast family, welcome back. For those who are checking me out for the first time, well, hello and welcome. To everyone listening, be encouraged and look for the Teachable Moments that are all around us. Enjoy. for a husband and wife together. Abba, Father, we come before you and open our lives and our hearts and our union to your love. Come and move in our minds, bringing hope and vision for our lives together. Move within our emotions to smooth away the tensions and disappointments we feel. Lord, please renew our strength and restore our energy with peaceful rest tonight and gentle dreams and with the intimacy of our friendship and our love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. This is a prayer for couples to pray together for their marriage, and it is suitable for praying before you retire for the evening and go to sleep. Malachi 2.15 Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit you are His. And what does He want? Godly children from your union. The joy of a happy marriage blessed with loving, respectful children who easily transition from childhood into responsible adults is a dream of most men and women. Found in almost every nation and culture, this desire seems to be hardwired into our minds and genetic makeup. Traditionally, marriage has been an exclusive bond between a man and a woman that includes their most intimate of acts, the sexual union. Yet in recent years, this pattern has been changing. Some are choosing to have children apart from marriage and others are opting for same-sex relationships. Nevertheless, it seems everyone wants the joy and blessings of a family. Even many of those who deviate from tradition will want their relationships to be called marriages and their social units, families. Homosexual couples unable to reproduce struggle to adopt children or make other arrangements so that they too can have Progeny. Now, isn't it ironic that the social experimenters want the terminology and fruits of traditional marriage, but don't want to follow the traditional recipe? Hmm. Why is it that we, as human beings, are so attracted to the terms marriage and family? So the next question is, marriage, will it survive? Looking at the state of marriage today leaves no doubt that the institution seems to be under serious attack. Now, in Western nations, including the United States, Canada, and Europe, close to half of all first-time marriages end in divorce. People who willingly say, I do, increasingly end up changing their words to, I won't anymore. Hmm. Now, based on the failure rate of today's marriages, some uh, sociologists have predicted that marriage will soon become obsolete. But despite the high odds against a happy, lifelong relationship, couples still get married and still hope to spend a lifetime together. Hmm. So why do we continue to pursue this ideal? And where does God fit in the picture? Where does he fit in? Did we have anything to do with the institution of marriage? And did he? Okay. And if so, did he give us any instructions? These are valid questions, right? If so, did he give us the instructions? When when all else fails, maybe we should maybe read the, the instructions and the directions? Makes sense, right? Of course, the problems encountered in marriages are not limited to just husbands and wives when children are involved. For when they enter the mix, hmm, 
they also experience the consequences of their parents' relationship, whether sound and strong or troubled and broken. This episode of Marriage and Relationships is courtesy of United Church of God. Marriage and Family, the Spiritual Significance. We look at the book of John 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. The hope for a happy, fulfilling marriage to the person we most deeply love is one of the most entrenched desires of men and women happily sharing our hopes, our dreams, fortune, and the breadth of life's experiences in all the most intimate ways is one of the most fulfilling endeavors of all. A good marriage further blessed with happy, respectful, successful children who provide the same kind of grandchildren is the crowning touch of a good life. And what a life this is. And what a life this is. What success! If possible, we'd all love to have this story be our story. This idealistic picture is a universal dream, right? Everyone wants the results, but not everyone wants to live the life that produces them. Now, from the beginning, God revealed that marriage was a special union between a man and woman because, to put it bluntly, that was the way to have children. Sexual intercourse between a male and a female united in marriage produced children within that family. Yet the benefits of traditional marriage extend beyond reproduction. Now studies continue to show that men and women generally live longer and happier lives when they are married to someone of the opposite sex. In these traditional unions, children likewise generally go up more socially uh, and adept and financially successful than children who grow up in alternate arrangements. Now, there is definitely a strong social case to be made for traditional monogamous marriage between one man and one woman. Now, through the pages of, 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 of this publication that we're going to be reading, we will also see that there is an incontrovertible biblical case for traditional unions. Experience has shown time and again that these biblical guidelines for relationships and parenting are the ones that work best. Are there any rules? That's the first question. But before we get to these biblical instructions, we must acknowledge that many people aren't sure whether God really exists or whether his instructions are relevant today. Some believe that human beings came into existence by evolutionary forces, following blind natural selection and the survival of the fittest. This theory postulates that people are simply higher level animals and that there are no spiritual laws to guide human conduct, no requirement that sexual relations be solely within the constraints of marriage. Now, experimenting from this perspective or because they simply didn't want to follow the biblical instructions, men and women through the ages have tried many, many different sexual relationships, including premarital sex, adultery, polygamy, one man with multiple wives, one woman with multiple husbands, homosexuality, and group marriages. Now today, premarital sex, adultery, and homosexual relationships have all gained greater acceptance. I think we'll agree on that, right? Challenging and undermining traditional marriage. The assumption among many, including governments and judges and legislation, accepting an acceptance of all views and people regardless of their practices and lifestyles, is that all choices are equal. Hmm. So people can do whatever they want. Now, sadly, this approach is presumed to be morally superior to all others. So the next question is, where we designed for marriage and family? I think that's a very good question. 